and hear my voice. So I am presenting online in here Trieste. So, so, uh, this talk is part two, part of the finite difference, <coughs> continued from the previous part by Jemo, a translational invariance. So uh, my, my surname is GHIM, but it's the same as KIM. But I decided to choose my surname as GHIM because KIM is too frequent. Anyway, let's start. So we are going to compute this position matrix element uh, calculated by this equation. So V is the volume of the unit cell, and U N K is the <coughs> app initial flow wave function obtained from the coarse grid calculation. Uh, uh, due to the numerical reason, we should calculate this K integral with the finite number of K points using discrete K sum and we also calculate the gradients using the uh, first of the finite differ difference, which is an approximation. Here, uh, B is uh, neighboring vectors from K to K plus B, and WB is the corresponding weight or coefficient for the finite difference. So these position matrix elements are required for binary spread and very, very curvature like term to calculate conductivity, orbital magnetization, shift current, and so on. So it is important to make position conversion fast. So <clears throat> why it is important to consider how the finite difference formula is that uh, the error of position matrix elements arising from maximally localized binary function is known as exponentially decreasing with NK uh, on the nk by nk by nk initial, initial course grid, but the error arising from the first of the finite difference is in order of nk to the minus two. Also, Marjorie and Van der Wilt mentioned in their PLB paper, it would be interesting to explore whether use of a higher or the finite difference representation of gradient k might improve this convergence, especially the your spread of the invariant part of the banner spread. So let's start from one dimension. Uh, we are assuming that we are using the central symmetric formula for finite difference. So for example, the first order formula is given as here. So we have two neighbors, minus h and plus h, with the error proportional to h squared. Uh, the second order has well, four neighbors with the error proportional to h to the four. So in this manner, we can extend to the n nth order and find the coefficients and error dependence. Now let's move on to the general case. The last term in the finite difference formula is added. It is fk to match the convention with that of previously published papers such as uh, Marjorie Vanderbilt in 1997. But this term plays no role because we have assumed the central symmetric assumption. And uh, since WB equals W minus B, so we don't need to keep this in mind. Uh, the weight, the WB are determined from neighbors by the completeness relation, the condition for the first of the case, given by this equation, symmetric in Cartesian indices alpha and beta. So now we have to find the analogy for the nth order case. Uh, <clears throat> the general formula can be compared with the one dimensional case for the first order example, uh, the formula for the finite difference can be reconstructed as this form. So uh, one over two B square is the weight and B is H or minus H. So B is the neighboring vector. So this WB and B also satisfy the completeness relation. <coughs> 
um, for the higher order finite difference, the second order formula in one dimension can also be reconstructed similarly. So we, uh, in three dimension, we have to choose more B vectors and corresponding complete this relation and WB. So the question can be divided into the two parts. Question one, how to find B for higher order cases. Question two, how to find WB from the higher order version of the completeness relation. So it's the first question. Uh, we have chose uh, neighbors as B to B, 3B in one dimension, but the situation is different because we have freedom to choose B in 2D or 3D because we can consider more directions other than one directions. So we can come up with two options. Uh, the first strategy is as near as possible, or in other words, nearest search. Uh, using the first strategy, we search from the origin to the farther region with increasing distance from K. So we will find the nearest B vectors. And the next strategy is a simple extension. Uh, we find, uh, we first find the first order finite difference P vectors and multiply it by two, three, or N. So we are going to use P to P, three P or N P with modified weight. Then after the determination of B vectors, next we have to find the corresponding weights. For the first order, we just had to make only the first derivative correct, but now we have new terms, such as second derivative, the third order derivative, uh, or the second order. So we have to eliminate these terms. <clears throat> Using more terms in the Taylor expansion, we can extract the first derivative. The first derivative is written as the B vector summation. And if we insert this Taylor expansion into the FK plus B, we have many terms and we can compare the left hand side and the right hand side term by term. Okay, so, so the first term in the right hand side is merely f. So the sum of wb b alpha should be zero. And the next term is the gradient of f. So uh, to make, make this term gradient alpha of f, the sum of wb b alpha b beta should be the Kronecker delta of alpha beta. And next, the, the third order is the, the the terms with three Bs or four Bs should be zero. <clears throat> now we have uh, four equations in total for the second order, but the first and the third equations are automatically satisfied because we have assumed we uh, we have assumed Bs are central symmetrically distributed and. The number of Bs are, in this case, all numbers. So they are automatically satisfied. So let's look at the first order equation. Uh, actually, the number of the first order equation is six because it is the combination with repetition of two Cartesian indices. <clears throat> so for example, it is uh, constructed by xx, xy, yy, yz, zz, and zx. So we can get maximally six independent wb. Uh, but for example, uh, in, in these cubic cases, uh, we have only one w, wb with uh, six points for the simple cubic cases, eight, point, uh, eight b vectors for the pcc cases, and 12 points for the FCC case, but uh, uh, with more 
uh, non non symmetrical cases, uh, we require maximally six independent WB, like triclinic cases. So for the second order equation, uh, we have now a combination with repetition of four Cartesian indices, which is 15. So we have total 21 equations. In this manner, the nth order, the number of the, the first order to the nth order equations are proportional, is proportional to the n cube. So when it comes to the error, error of gradient and linear spread is proportional to p to the 2n. So <clears throat> let me compare the two methods, near search versus simple extension. Um, the first method, near research, works by including additional p from the origin and check the conditions repeatedly until the conditions are satisfied. The good point is that the, uh, since the near research uses the nearest p vectors, and because the error is proportional to p to 2n, this results in the smaller error relative to the simple extension. Uh, while the bad thing is that the large, <coughs> it has a large number of equations. For the simple extension, the weights WB can be readily found as introduced in the next page. So the, uh, to find WB is very simple. And also <coughs> the number of B is relatively small. So also the dot MMN file, such as dot MMN file from PW2 on your 90 dot X from quantum espresso becomes very small. So this is about finding WB uh, with the simple method. At first, assume the completeness relation with the readily found first order B vectors and WB. And the high load versions of complete these relations are expanded. And using the first order equation, the final equation is simplified by this matrix equation. Uh, therefore, the weights of simple can be found by the Kramer's rule. Uh, the Kramer's rule is quite expensive to be calculated, but the coefficient matrix is similar to the so-called Vanderbilt matrix, which is easy to find determinant. So the determinant of this matrix is able to be calculated by hand. So just the nth order weights are simply found by this formula. So we are ready to calculate linear quantities. The first example is polarization linear polarization of potassium niobate whose structure is an elongated perovskite. Here the white spheres are oxygens, the gray, gray sphere in the middle is niobium, and the black dust at the corner is potassium. So polarization has two contributions. The first contribution is the ionic contribution, and the second contribution is the electronic contribution, uh, which can be calculated by the sum of the binary centers in occupied states. Here, the factor two is inserted because uh, we have done the non, non spin polarized calculation. So we expect the error dependence follows this, this formula. In the left figure, figure D. We can see the convergence of polarization with increasing number of k points. Uh, here, simple and nearest search are not much different because here dot and cross mark are <coughs> uh, not not much different here. So, and the third order is not much faster than the second order relative to the first order. The convergence of the first first of them. And the converged value is found near 0 0.38. Uh, 
which is the same of the result of Stengel and Spalding. So in the right figure, uh, the x x x axis has been changed to this proportional to n k to minus two n two to see the error depends more clearly. Although so y intercept at x equals zero is the expected converse value. Uh, the next example is the converge of the so binary spread of silicon. The same analysis can be applied because the error behavior of binary spread is the same as of the error dependence of the binary polarization. <coughs> so uh, here, the inset in the right figure shows the B dependence of the error is also correct for the second order and the third order. The main bottleneck is the uh, non-self-consistent calculation. So the reducing NK is the most important matter. Uh, and the time consumption becomes not quite long using the, the higher order calculation. So the higher order calculation is beneficial when we consider total computational time because of <clears throat> we can reduce the number of key points. Also, the Stank and Spalding's work can be interpreted to the infinite with the finite difference, but only with the second order we can obtain a quite good convergence without much time consumption. But <clears throat> we have to be cautious because uh, the higher order finite difference can be helpful for convergence, but it may not work without translational invariant formulas introduced by Jemo. This is an illustration of translational mirrors. The pink line, this sign function, is the position operator, and the blue line is the position operator with translational invariance. The role of higher order finite difference is to make the position to the real position with more Taylor expansion terms. So the position is now a, like a salt shape. However, without translational invariant, higher order finite difference with, may not work because uh, the wrong location of may uh, the wrong location of saltus may cause some error. So uh, especially when binary functions are far from the origin, uh, I recommend to use the higher the finite difference with translational invariant formulas at the same time, especially when your uh, functions are far from the origin. So <clears throat> the conclusion is that the, the error we verified the error or the, or the order of error is proportional to b to the two n, and the higher the finite difference requires more completeness relations. Oh. We had two methods, near search and simple extension. But for the polarization or bar near spread, uh, they showed no significant difference. And also, just a simple second order finite difference can enhance calcula calculations much. <clears throat> one, one more thing is without translation invariance, a higher order correction may be insufficient. So, uh, Translational invariance uh, should be the, the default for Banyar 19 or as, uh, and so on. So we have only calculated uh, Banyar spread or Banyar polarization or other quantities such as orbital magnetization, which has two gradients of two gradients of ab initio both states or spin current, which has gradient with spin, not only this term. Uh, these quantities should be calculated to test the higher order finite difference further. So this is the end of the talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Minsum, <clears throat> uh, for the great talk. Is there any question here? Inter okay. I see. Uh, 
And in the meantime, if online you have a question, please write them in, in the chat. Thanks very much for a very clear talk. And so um, I hope you feel better soon. Uh, just you. a quick question. So when you go to higher order, then obviously you have to calculate more matrix elements, uh, the M, M, N, K, B. And so there's sort of a trade-off between calculating more of those matrix elements and just using the first order and using more K points. Can you comment on sort of the, the relative computational cost and, and where you see that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, uh, in the process of uh, binaryization, we should calculate first uh, self-consistent and, and next non-self-consistent and next PW2 binary 90 with uh, new neighboring vectors from the NN, NNKP pipes and finally binaryization. Okay, so the NK point, the number of NK points uh, affects the uh, NSCF or NSCF and PW2 Banyar 90 because banyarization speed is now not not quite not quite boosted. So uh, so for the NSCF calculation, it's very important to reduce NK. Because this NK, but we, we <coughs> the, the number of K points is proportional to NK2 because on the NK by NK by NK additional course grid. So computational time of NSCF is proportional to NK2. <coughs> and uh, oh, if we if we assume that we use the simple Method, the na neighbor, the neighboring vectors, the na the number of neighboring vectors is proportional to n because we are using b to b three b or n b. Uh, uh, I also recommend to use the simple method rather than the nearest nearest search method. Uh, so the computational time of p to binary ninety may be the, the proportional to uh, O and K. So uh, <clears throat> the total computational time will be reduced with higher order because the main bottling may be the NSCF calculation. Hi, um, if I could just ask a point of clarification. Um, when you're doing the, your higher order finite difference, um, am I right to think that you're doing that for the construction of the Vanier functions themselves? Because I can imagine a, a situation in which um, you apply it as a post correction. So you could use the, 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 the the straightforward, the, the, simple, the first order formula that we have at the moment in order to get to, to, to do the minimization of the spread functional. And then um, you could uh, use the higher order formula afterwards in order to get a more accurate representation of the, of the, of the spread. My point being that the, the Vanier functions themselves, I think, converge quite quickly with respect to the k-point grid. It's just simply the representation of the spread that is, that is slower. Um, so I just wonder if you could comment on that. <clears throat> oh, so, so could you repeat that again, please? So your higher order formula for computing the finite, for, um, for computing the spread is that what is used for the minimization of the Vanier functions? Or are you applying this in a post minimization step to, to correct the spread and the centers? I'm 
sorry, can you hear the question that's being asked? From I, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, I'm afraid I can. I can make a good explanation. But, um. Could could you email later? <laughs> yep, I can, I can follow up with you for sure. <laughs> okay, so um. So actually, Minsu, uh, if I understand correctly, used uh, the correct formula in both uh, vanillarization and in calculating the matrix. And we haven't yet uh, separated the two effects, but we, we are, he's like, going to uh, study the separate effects. Yeah, separately. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very important question, right. Yes, I guess I'm worried with the higher order formula, whether there's anything more complicated in, in the minimization process, but perhaps it doesn't actually lead, and, and, and your inability to test this, you can prove perhaps that the Vanier function is <laughs> fairly invariant to how we choose that spread. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, indeed, also as, as a follow up <laughs> comment, uh, I mean, uh, what you choose uh, to calculate the gradients affects the symmetry that you end up, uh, you know, with the Vanier function. And so it might be easier with a first order formula to choose the right uh, group of symmetrized B vectors so that you have a desired symmetry. Because, you know, sometimes uh, you can afford a uh, uh, lower accuracy Find a difference formulas, but with the right symmetry properties for the gradient and the real space vector that comes from it, then a more accurate formula that though breaks the symmetry. So sometimes it's easier to work with a you know first order finite differences and then maybe just doing higher order as a post processing. It's, uh, at the same time, the symmetry, <coughs> the, the number of neighbors are. Uh, quite large, large, large. So it will be good to use both of them at the same time. Yeah. Uh, let me add just uh, yeah. Thank thanks Minsu and also thanks for the nice comment. Actually, we also found that if we use just four sort of formula, the symmetry is broken. So we need very many fine coarse grid points. So. We want to also, we, we are planning to look into this, how it affects the symmetry. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Hi, do you think that uh, using this high order formula might improve also the symmetries when using the automated uh, procedure? Because all it's all the, also there, we found that the automated procedure sometimes generates funny function that do not respect the symmetries at their center. Uh, I'm not sure the symmetries, uh, the symmetries largely related to the higher order minor difference, but <laughs> uh, maybe I think I can test it more extensively. So this, this is a question. I just, uh, another, another quick question. I mean, so you've been looking at um, finite difference formulae that sort of work along, along lines in, in, in reciprocal space, but actually there's also more complicated ones called like Mestellen discretizations, which take account of, uh, of, of more than just, you know, one direction, they're, they're, they're multi-directional finite difference formulae. So, you know, the, 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 the value at a particular point depends on 
points around in uh, in three D in a more complicated way. And there's a lot of literature actually in the engineering um, uh, field on you know accuracy of finite difference formulations and looking at some of these more complicated ones. It, it would actually just be interesting to know which which is the best for, for this problem, um, even oh. even accounting for these ones. Is that similar to the nearest search or a near near search uses uh not not one not or Cartesian Cartesian direction as uh, this method uses many directions other than uh, <coughs> special directions. Um I think I, I think uh they may be different. So uh, is it possible to just avoid doing the finite difference and directly solve uh, for the derivative of the box state? I mean, I think PFPT must compute that at some point. Uh, so maybe like, is there a way to like pull out of ph.x this derivative directly and work somehow with that? <coughs> so do, direct, what, what do you mean by direct? So, you know, NSCF solves you know, u of k, but you can write the equation for derivative of u of k with respect to k, and then you know, compute that and store somehow. Yeah, so um, yeah, in the center on the right, this matrix element, you know, direct, direct, directly compute derivative of u. Is that possible somehow? Oh, but if you compute it in the block gauge, it didn't transform back somehow. I don't know. And the other comment is, I think on slide four, like you, you had this uh, higher order um, expressions, but I think they are, they give you smaller errors only if the function you're integrating is very smooth. I think if the function is not smooth, then the higher order, I think actually gives you worse result. but I might not remember this right. Uh, generally, when you your comment. Uh, the final difference would uh, work if the function is like analytic, not that, uh, not having a singular points. Yeah, but then is Perfect. it possible the band structure sometimes have some things which are not smooth or I, I don't know, maybe, maybe that doesn't make sense. Uh, maybe it's always smooth, I don't know. I was just thinking. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I'm uh, just ignorant, but uh, when I calculate the uh, position matrix, uh, uh, I calculated uh, some, uh, uh, how to say, uh, several compounds, but uh, some of them, uh, when they have the band crossing, there is some uh, numerical errors in position matrix. Is, is there something like this uh, when you calculate uh, related to the band crossing? Because uh, I, I don't know, just uh, I'm maybe ignorant, but. Uh, it seems there is some problem in my calculation. Do you, do you aware of that such kind of a uh, problem? Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm not aware, not aware of that. Ah, okay. <coughs> okay. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe my calculation was not good. Uh, I, um, yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, if not, we can <coughs> thank Minsu again. And now for, for real this time, <laughs> this, was, this was the last talk of um, this morning. So now we have a lunch break and we come back here at uh, 2 p.m. Okay, for the... So for the flash talks, we have a one hour flash talks. And then there is a small change in the schedule. As I told you, keep an eye on, uh, on the website. So tomorrow morning, we will not have uh, the talk of uh, Ivano Tevernelli on quantum computing and applications in natural science. The talk is being moved to Thursday, same time, 9 a.m. So if there is anyone who is supposed to give a talk at any other time and wants to anticipate that, just come to me. And uh, otherwise, we will start half an hour later. Thank you.